Jimbo Paris, and you are listening to the Jimbo Paris Show. All right, how's it going, everyone? This is Jimbo Paris. Welcome to the Jimbo Paris Show. Today we have Jeevan Mathru, and he's basically a management partner as well as a transformational coach. And Again, very impressive guy, very successful guy. What kind of got my attention was that he was both, you know, a transformational coach that had a kind of a holistic approach to kind of teaching people on finances. And additionally, he was a judo guy. So let's see what he has to say. Hi, Jimbo. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. You too. So, can you kind of give me a gist of who you are, what you're about, and what your message is? Yeah, so, to sort of touch on, on what you just mentioned a moment ago, really, Jimbo, I've got my sort of finger in a lot of pies, and I think as, as a man, I think it's really important to to try and have a lot going on in your life. So, from a, a business perspective, I work as a, a financial advisor, so that's something predominantly for people looking to retire and helping those out with their finances. So that's more my sort of nine to five, as it were. Um, not that I work as a nine to five, but it's probably the easiest way to explain it. I also work as a transformational coach. So that's helping people who want to help sort their own life out. So people who maybe lack goal focus, maybe people who want to develop their own skill set, who want to get rid of limiting beliefs and actually develop as a person. In line with that, I actually wrote a book as well. So it's a book called Become a Person of Value that breaks down all of the aspects that helps an individual to become their best self, whether it's time management, setting goals, mastering your own psychology, um, you know, self-improvement on a, on a general basis, motivation. So all of that encompassed into one book. And it really works in parallel with the coaching side. Just as an aside from that, actually, is I'm writing a second book as well that should be out later on in the year, and we'll probably come on to talk about that at some point. Outside of work, I enjoy sort of hiking, walking the dog, and as you said, judo. So something I took up at the age of 30. Um, I did do it as a kid for a few years as well, but I got to that age at 30, and obviously with 30 being a pretty big age, I don't know how old you are, Jimbo, but 30 is a pretty big age. Um, and, and you start to see that life is, is continuing to move on and you sit down and think well actually and you know we'll come on to how important questions are what do I really want for my life do you know what sort of hobbies did I enjoy as a kid and what do I want to pursue so for me judo is a great way to to have some sort of physical combat but also make good friends and, and keep fit so I started at age 30 I'm now 32 and I've managed to get myself into a, a good position I'm actually in the rankings at the moment, which is good, um, and obviously want to continue to progress up the rankings. I've got my own goals, and I sort of train three, four, five times a week. And um, so, as with anything, you know, to be the best, you know, the ten thousand hour rule comes to mind. You have to be willing to put in the effort, reflect on on what you need to improve on, what's going well, and continue to devote your time and resources to that endeavour. So, so yeah, I, think, I hope that's a good briefing as to who I am. And um, obviously, if you want to delve deeper, yeah, that, that's what we're here for. Yeah, you know, definitely. You know, when I first heard you, you went into judo at 30, you know, that takes a different frame of mind because at that age, you know, don't get me wrong, it's still young, but, you know, getting into a combat sport at that age, it must be tough for, you know, the average person, but it seems like you have a certain type of mindset. And from what I could tell additionally, you know, you're a very skilled person as well, you know, financial advisor, retirement planner, so you have a wide array of different skills. Where did this mindset come in, this kind of headspace that built this amazing foundation of skills that you have now? Well, I think sometimes in life it's, it's stuff that you don't have that you need to develop. So, you know, a lot of times people, let's say they're not very social, they actually can become very social later on because they think, well, actually, what do I need to work on? I need to work on becoming more social. And they proactively go about their life in a way to become more social, go to more events, you know, go and speak to people, you know, cold approach females if, if that's their thing. And it helps you to develop in that basis. So for me, I was actually kicked out of school as a, as a kid. I was very smart. I'm, I'm actually a member of Mentor, if you're familiar with what Mentor is. 
Yeah, Mensa Select, I've heard of them. Yeah, so Mensa is top 2% of IQ. You, you take an IQ test, and if you're in the top 2% of IQ, you, you know, you get in. You're generally between a, a 132 and a 145 to get into Mensa um, as an IQ range. So I had the, had the intelligence there, but I didn't have the devotion and the, the focus really to be my best self. So at school, you know, I was put it today, stars and stuff, and, you know, I still got good grades, but I didn't have the work ethic and the determination and the focus to to actually achieve what I needed to achieve. As I got older, obviously, you start to think, well, where could I be and where am I? Where's that discrepancy? Where's that come from? And how can I close that gap? And that's where... You know, as I said, I wrote a book and now sort of work for myself both on the transformational coaching and the wealth management side. Because you've got to look at where you want to be and backpedaling and look at what you need to do now. You know, as a man, for me, you know, you need to be able to fight. You need to have your own business. You need to have a good friendship circle. You need to be in good physical shape, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And to get those attributes, you need to be doing certain things. So with the judo side, yeah, you know, it's, it's difficult to start that at 30, but I did do it, as I said, as a, as a kid from, I don't know, 7 to 10 or 7 to 11. So there is some sort of extrapolation of that at an older age. It's maybe tapping back into what you learned at, at that age. I did karate as well, but I don't think karate is as useful as, as judo, if I'm honest. There's not enough combat. You know, it's, for people listening, you know, there's combat sports and there's martial arts. Combat sports are ones where you, you know you pretty much fight every time you, you go, you know, like jujitsu or judo or boxing. Yeah, they're, they're more combat based sports. Whereas martial arts, you know, you get your kung fu, your karate, etc. It's it's more technical based. You know, you see a lot of it's like punching fair and stuff. And for me, that didn't really help as much as the combat side. But the problem with people is that they tend to set negative based goals, Jim. But you know, they will say, "Well, I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want to be fat. I don't want to be single." Blah blah blah. Why not look at what you do want instead? I want a relationship. I want to be able to fight. I want to be in good shape. Although they mean the same thing, they don't really mean the same thing to your subconscious mind. So it's all about the direction you're heading and, and where you're charting your course, essentially. Like for you, you know, if you've got your own podcast, you will have thought to yourself in your head, oh, I want to start a podcast. This is the sort of thing that I want to, the message I want to put across. These are the sort of demographic of people that I want to, to serve these are the sort of guests that I want to have on board and these are the sorts of topics that we want to discuss you know you have to have something built in the mind before it appears in reality you know the house that you're sitting in now it was built by an architect and designed by an architect first in the mind it was built and, and here you are so as with anything you know business becoming a boxer or footballer you have to have that initial impetus in the mind first and for those people who think, well, I actually haven't got anything, you have to ask yourself questions. You know, who do I want to be? What sort of legacy do I want to leave? What skill set do I have? What personality type I am? And um, what do I enjoy doing in my time? Because if you can marry all of that up, that's where you're going to be most productive. Okay. Okay. So when it came to your life and sort of transforming, what was the first step in transforming your life? And where did you begin? Um, so, as I said, my life wasn't going that badly you know i went to university you know got a two one and um, you know got a good paid job and um, professional you know work as an advisor as i said it's not a case of doing well or doing badly it's a discrepancy as, as to what your potential is versus where you are you know usain bolt let's say he ran 100 meters in 11 seconds that's pretty quick but it's not as close to what his optimal 9.7 or whatever it is 9.6 something so it's trying to find out where you know how to improve or reduce that discrepancy. So I was working at a, a job and I was starting to understand how important time management is. So I was driving five, six hours a day in the car to go to client meetings and stuff. And instead of listening to the same playlist over and over again, the same songs that I know all the words to, or songs that I've just listened to a lot, I thought, well, why can't I use this six hours to learn something, develop, I don't know, time management skills, sales skills, m mentality skills, etc., etc. And it really developed... From there, you know, listen to people like Jim Rowan and Brian Tracy, you know, Nightingale, etc., etc., and that sort of helped me to trigger my own mind that subsequently has, has led me here today. Okay, okay. And when we talk about transformation, what is transformation? Many of the reasons people are where they are is because of their limiting beliefs. You know, rich people are, you know, are thieves, and you know, you, they're lucky and all this sort of stuff. It's trying to reprogram that fundamental mindset before anything can change. 
so if, if you believe, oh, I'm never going to be rich, no one, no one loves me, I'm unattractive, I'm unlucky, blah blah blah. What results are you going to happen off the back of that? If you feel like I never succeed at anything I do, and that's a deep subconscious thing. It's not something that you maybe say to yourself in the mirror. Oh, I never achieve it. It's something that you might mutter to yourself. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, she she doesn't like me because of, oh, you know, I've got a bent nose or my ears are big or my chin's funny or whatever it's going to be. That's your own view of yourself. It's insecurity. So the first thing that we need to transform is our mind because everything comes from that grey matter. You know, what's the difference between a professional athlete and someone who's not professional, assuming they've got a very similar ability? It's just a mindset. I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo is a prime example. Look at the dedication that he's given and he's not that much technically better than some of the other footballers around. He's just not. But what he has got is discipline to eat the right foods, motivation to, to be the best. You know, he calls himself the greatest. So I'm actually, I prefer Messi than Ronaldo, but Ronaldo's a better example for this purpose. He says, look, this is the, the goal I want. I want to be the best. So if you want to be the best, how does the best behave? So a daily routine or a daily habit is going to bring results over the long term. One of the things that people get wrong is they get overwhelmed by a large task. So if I was to say, look, I'm going to write a book this year, that sounds like a pretty big task, doesn't it? If you think if you think of it on the face of it. A book in a year, that's it just seems very overwhelming. What if we broke that down into a daily goal or daily segment? You know, with a pizza, you don't eat the whole pizza at once. You don't, you know, roll it up and, and stuff it in your mouth. I mean, some people <laughs> might do, but yeah, they're probably not going to be on the healthier side, let's let's say. So if we broke down that major goal into a goal that said, if we just write one page a day, which not that difficult, by the end of the year you've got three hundred and fifty six pages. 365 pages, even. 365 pages. That's enough to run a book. And let's, let's, for argument's sake, say there's not 365 pages. There's 300 pages. You've then got a few months to do all the editing, the printing, you know, do the cover, pre proofread it, give it to one of your friends or family to read. And by that, that year end, the goal is done. Same with the, you know, the judo thing. You said, like, I've got goals of where I want to be, or with the books and the, the coaching stuff. You have to reverse engineer it. You know, to be in that top five or six in the country, you need to be training four, five, six times a week. You need to do your conditioning stuff. You need to work on the the strategy side. So it's a, it's a, it's a chess game, like boxing. You know, these sports, they're not, a you know, a, a street fight. They are fighting within a parameter of rules that require strategy to win. You also do a lot of counselling as well, right? So this is a very good perspective that you have. But how do you teach people so the word counseling really forms part of that coaching side so just to sort of explain the difference between sort of counseling and a coaching based approach so a counselor is typically for someone who's had past trauma so you know they've abused or they've been subject to um substance abuse in the past so it's trying to understand why that happened and what happened in the past that caused you to take those actions and look at why you're here today coaching on the other hand is to say well where are you now where do you want to be and how do we deliver and get you there so as far as counseling goes counseling is you know we do need to understand why you are where you are but what's more important than that is how we proceed forward because yeah you know we can look at the past but the past isn't going to change now is it the future is what, what we can change and um, that's you know really where all of that fits together if that answers your question hmm. okay okay and and you say you have you know a holistic approach to things like financial planning how does that all begin and, and, and you know this is just for me. This is a bit of a basic question. Yeah. What is financial plan? So finance in general is a very broad area, isn't it? You know, you've got accountants, you've got, you know, legal um, finance guys, you've got um, tax accountants, you've got financial advisors, you've got stockbrokers, the list, the list goes on. So I'm in the financial advisory space, specifically in retirement planning. So it's people who are 55, 60, 65 years of age who want to use their pensions in the best way possible to provide them with income long term. That's it in a nutshell, really. So we look at you know how it should be invested, what's your risk category, what other income and expenditure you've got coming in. Do you want to leave assets to your kids? Are you single, married, divorced, good health, poor health? And we sort of build a, a strategy off the back of that. So that's how the sort of finance side works. Does that answer your question? Okay. Just and going back to your, your previous yeah. question, because I think there is something to add there as well in terms of what your question was. How do I help people 
whether it's with the wealth management side or the or the coaching side, it's about asking the right questions. So if you go to a car salesman mm. and he says, oh, this is the car you should take. You should take this, I don't know, BMW X5. This is the car you should have. How do you know what car they want? It's like, you know, the, what's that film? Wolf of Wall Street. Do you know when he says, sell me this pen? Yeah. Yeah. The whole reason he said sell me this pen is he doesn't want you to say, oh, it's a blue pen, it's great, it's fantastic. You need to build a rapport and you need to understand what the other person's after. So with a car, as we, as we said, if you want something that's great fuel economy, that's small around town, that is two-door, that has got, say, power steering, cheap tyres, an X5 is probably not going to be right for you. On the other hand, if you've got two big dogs, you drive off-road and you know your budget is X, you want a you know a German car, then the next five might be right for you. So what we need to establish is what does the other person want and can we deliver that? So with the coaching side, it's well, what do you want? Okay, X, Y, and Z. Well, what are you doing at the moment that's going to get you there? Well, this is actually pushing me further in this direction. I want to go this direction. Well, is that down to a mental block? Are you got the right habits, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So it's, it's to help people navigate through and and actually they people have got their own answers inside what i want to do and that's to help people to, to improve their lives whether that's the wealth management side and, and retire and enjoy themselves or whether it's the coaching side and actually fulfill their potential because i i know i did, did this with myself you know I, I wasn't fulfilling my potential massively i always got the same feedback you know you you're really smart but you're not quite fulfilling the potential and that's why i've tried to make it a focus because look there's no point in chasing stuff jim Rohn said that frustration is trying to find an above average job with above average pay without being an above average person that's what everyone's looking for they want a 100 grand job but they don't want to be a 100 grand person they don't want to have the skill set so this is what i start to realize that actually to get the you know the, the ideal wife and family and car and house you need to work on the value that you bring it's what the first book's about you know becoming that person of value because you attract based on your value rather than to chase for the income all right well, well yeah you know that, that, that's true as well and you know additionally you know i'm just gonna run through the rest because you've done so much here your iq is you said you love being in the top percent so your iq is in the top two percent you know that must have did that do anything to you mentally? Did that give you a bit more confidence or um, does it give people confidence? Do you even care? Well, there's two things. One is that there's not a direct correlation between IQ and success. You know, any of the most successful people aren't, aren't smart. They're just very good at what they do. IQ is just your processing power, generally, and your ability to understand and comprehend information. So if you, you know, I don't know what laptop you've got there, but you get your i3, i4, i5, i7 processor. Obviously, the higher IQ, the faster the processing speed. Fine. But it doesn't reflect that. As I said, at school, you know, I was doing exams years before I was meant to, but I couldn't apply myself. You know, I had the ability, but there's, you know, there's no there's application. You know, if you've got a Bugatti Veyron, but there's no tyres on the car, you know, you, you can't put the power down and actually move forward. So you're better off having a, you know, a Honda Accord with tyres that can actually move at a steady pace the social and hierarchical demands or parts of the game that it don't factor in with IQ. You know, it's socially, you know, how well do you get on with people? What's your network like? Um, are you likable? Looks matter as well. There was a psychological study done on the sentences given to people based on their looks and the more attractive people, both male and female, got lesser sentences. So everything matters. So, you know, that's why, as I said with the book, you know, phys physicality is actually the first chapter because without... You know, there's no point in having a great mentality if you are not in a good place fitness-wise. Because people do judge books by their cover, naturally. And if, you know, you've heard about the mind-body connection, unless your body's in a good place, you, you know, your mind's not going to be in a good place. So that's, you know, as I said, the first book's just like a go-to manual for how to bring everything together. The second book, and I'm quite excited about this one, that should be out by the end of the year, is about questions you should ask yourself. So a question a day. So first day might be, well, where do you want to be in five years' time? You write down where you want to be in five years' time. Then there's some additional points. You know, I put some input into have you thought about this, have you thought about this? And then there's a second page as well to write down a more in detailed answer. And then day two will be a different question, day three, day four, et cetera. You know, one of the questions might be what personality type are you? And we'll list them out. And, you know, what jobs are good, what jobs are bad for you? Because by the end of the year, you should have a much better understanding of your own self and it might give you even one gem to, to change the trajectory of, of your life, you know. So, and the good thing is, is I'm not telling you, I'm guiding to an extent, but you're going to write down your own thing. And then you can review that. You can look at, you know, 12 months later, you go back, oh, where do I want to be in five years? Oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm partway there. 
or things have changed. You know, I'm going to suggest doing it in pencil anyway when the book comes out, so that people can maybe you know re not reuse it, but maybe adjust stuff and say, well, actually, you know, that's that's changed, and then use it as a guide. Because look, if you haven't got a sat nav on or a destination, you end up you know just moving around, taking any job that comes up just because it's available and you're available. And mistakes are a good thing. You should seek out failure. If you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. Because if, like I could not fail, I could just walk to the shopping bag i'm like yeah success 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 but i'm not developing anything if i go to my everest and let's say i didn't summit at least i'm challenging myself for something and i've developed learned something and i might go again and, and succeed next time you know most people well not most not everyone who goes to everest first time would, would summit because it depends on the weather it depends on the team it depends on you obviously as a person you've got to put yourself outside your comfort zone physically mentally emotionally whatever it's going to be it's the only way to develop. A lot of people want to be courageous. Well, let's put it this way. Everyone wants to be courageous, disciplined, focused, you know, funny, etc. But let's just put it this way. To be courageous, you have to put yourself in fearful situations. Courage does not mean that you don't get scared by anything. Courage means that you're scared, but you continue to do it anyway. To be fearless is, is to not have fear. Courageous is actually having fear and moving forward. So to be courageous by design, you have to put yourself in fearful situations does that make sense to develop the courage otherwise you're not courageous so people want the courage but they don't want to put themselves into shitty situations talking about the judo thing i entered the competition for like the ranking events when i was well before when i should be but i had the courage like well i'm not scared of just a normal you know tom dick or harry just because they have got this you know black belt and their uh, this name doesn't mean nothing to me you know i'm i, I wasn't scared well Come back to that. You're not scared, but you've you've got some some inherent fear there that you have to say, look, I've got to stand up, and that's where the courage comes from. So you have to do that. You have to be fearful in some in some respects. You know, if you are fearful that you are going to quit your job and start something, that, sometimes that means that you're doing the right thing. Because as the Stoics said, the obstacle is the way. Sometimes, if there is an obstacle in the way, that means that is the way to go. Hmm. It's not a case of moving from the obstacle and and, and, and meandering round. Go the way of the obstacle, develop the skill set to um, to overcome that obstacle. Uh, and then obviously beyond that, you know, you'll develop many skill sets over the years and, and become the person that you you evidently want to want to become anyway. So, so, yeah. Well, you have given a load of gems in this episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on us. Um, I think that you've asked some really good questions and the, the conversations flowed well. And as you said, sometimes it's just a case of brain dumping. You know, I say something, I'm like, oh, you know, this is relevant as well. Because I want to try and give as much information to, to obviously yourself and, and your listeners as, as possible. And I think the, be- the the more you can give, the better. Even if I help one person, two people, three people from this podcast, they can maybe help one, two, three people. And and that's how you, you know, you make a, a major change. All right. Well, are there any, that was a great statement there, but are there any final kind of words you'd like to say to the audience? So if anyone wants to sort of reach out and I'll have some, some coaching or, or read any of the books, I'm sure you'll provide that as well, Jimbo. But um, Vanquish Transformational Coaching is, is the coaching side and we'll have, we can have a just initial free chat there's no no issues there uh the books wise become a person of value is the the book that's out on sale at the moment on amazon and the second book is yet to be named but it will be a question a day and as i said it will be interactive so you can maybe do some of your own coaching if that makes sense with some of those questions so so yeah that's what i would say obviously get in touch and we can help to improve uh your life moving forward all right thanks for jumping all right so this is the Jimbo Paris show. We're just going to kind of end it off here. First of all, Six Figure University. These are a group of women here teaching you how to make six figures. One got into real estate. The other owns a salon. They came together and now they're teaching you how to kind of make your own real estate business and make some money and get some six figures. And then our next person is our LifeWork Systems affiliate. She is the sort of HR superstar. She owns a business that helps improve the HR infrastructure in your business, which can allow it to hit its goals much more easily. Reach out to us. We're a collaborative partner. And again, we have a YouTube channel. Subscribe to us. Check out our show. This is going to be on our YouTube channel. And additionally, we've got a Roku channel. Check us out there on Roku as well. This will be on Roku as well as our other Plurethra of episodes too. Okay, you know, I'm Jimbo Paris. This is the Jimbo Paris Show. Thank you for listening to The Jimbo Parish Show. 